Hi guys, welcome back to the food room. I am Aline and today we are talking about Trinidad and Tobago's number one street food, doubles. Everybody knows what doubles is. There's so many things to know about doubles and today we are going to talk about the history of it, where to eat it, why and how to eat doubles. So, first of all, let's cover what is doubles. Now, there's a lot of articles that's written about doubles on many different platforms. And simply put, doubles is a fried yellow dough that's very soft, chana, that is cooked down, or chickpeas as some persons will know it, that is cooked down into a very soupy like texture and it goes with a little pepper sauce which is optional cucumber chow some sweet sauce some shadow benny sauce that's it it's served in a little greaseproof paper and you can either have it on spot or you can take it to go it's that that simple and doubles has already celebrated its 100th birthday so all good things it's been around for quite a long time and you know we celebrate it every day here now in Trinidad and Tobago doubles means so much to us it's cultural social it's everything to us it's part of our daily life it is a business that supports families it is so much more than just the culinary experience that everybody talks about and I have found that no matter where you are on the social or financial ladder you can just meet at a doubles vendor and have a good conversation with no quarrels and i think it's a great part of what our unity signifies it really does bring persons together now in a lot of what i've read on doubles there are a few things that is said about doubles in its description that i feel might be a little offensive to some of us some people may not care but sometimes I feel like in when you hear other people describe it there's some kind of cringe worthy expressions that I would like to share with you today so one is that people refer to doubles as a sandwich we don't like that we really don't like when you refer to doubles as a sandwich because it's really not that it's doubles and I think by now a hundred years later <laughs> Um, we can definitely just hope that you can say doubles and people know what it is so we don't like when you say that it's a sandwich then in descriptions they describe the barra which is the soft yellow fried dough as flat bread or fried bread we also no, we don't like that it's a barra that's what it is we really don't it's not bread so you can feel free to stop saying that and then also sometimes people say that it's curry chana and that is not what that is so curry is a verb and a noun to us so to curry means burn the curry in the oil and you cook the ingredients in there and that is actually not the process in making doubles so those three things are kind of cringeworthy expressions that i have found and you know hopefully people can use some different descriptions so you know to give it its justice so where did doubles come from now there is a book that's called out of the doubles kitchen and it's written by the son of the person who claims to have invented doubles right here in Trinidad and Tobago he claims that his father Mamu Dean is an was an illiterate businessman that did invent this and it's now considered the most popular street food in Trinidad and Tobago. So his son wrote this book, and again, it's called Out of the Doubles Kitchen, and it basically explains the process of how the business was started. Now, one of the myths that um, exists is that Ali's Doubles is responsible for the invention of doubles. And what the author had to say in an interview on TV6 is that his aunts actually married into the Ali family and his dad, Mamoudin, shared the business model with that family. And of course, Ali's Doubles is one of the more popular doubles brands in Trinidad and Tobago. So, you know, and he said 
you know he did his due diligence when writing the book so he has testimony from the Ali family verifying that yes this is true because everybody would really want to be the one that invented it so you know not to have any bacchanal in there he made sure to do his due diligence and he has his book and it's available on Amazon as well and I really enjoyed that TV6 interview you can also check that out so there is a journey that Doubles has taken in terms of status um, in the beginning, Doubles was considered a low class or a poor people meal because it was cheap and it was considered to be less than favorable if you were a son or a daughter of a person that made and sell Doubles and also it was also considered a very degrading job to have selling Doubles. Um, and apparently teachers would also say, you know, you better learn your books because you don't want to end up selling doubles. Now, fast forward some years down the line, we have where Doubles is being featured in articles in Food and Wine magazine. The Travel Ch Channel has featured um, Doubles as, you know, a must, sorry, a must have when you travel to Trinidad and Tobago. And then it has also gotten culinary acknowledgement from Andrew Zimmern and the late Anthony Bourdain. So, even while I live here in Tobago, I have seen where when I moved here originally, there wasn't really a lot of doubles vendors. There were maybe one, and now I think we have at least six of them. And so it, even it, it has even grown here in Tobago where it wasn't as popular as it was in Trinidad. Even though we are the same country, we are two separate islands, and we do carry somewhat different cultures in some things. So doubles, you know, really grew here. And so it's amazing to see that something like that can grow into something so majestic and so, you know, something that we can, we can now be proud of. And it really just puts a little dignity in doubles. And, you know, people grew great families off of, you know, this particular business. And it also kind of reminds me of pizza, which was also considered peasant food. And now pizza is such a big part of so many culinary experiences and people putting all kinds of creative spins on it and it's just an amazing journey i would say so there is doubles etiquette for those who don't know and it's very simple and so here's how to order and eat doubles so first you have to read the room a little when you get there well it's not a room it's the roadside um there's a side that you can order and eat as you stand there and then there's a side that you order and you take away so you need to really observe that protocol and don't block anybody from ordering if you're eating you get your doubles you slide to the side you eat over there if you're ready for the next one you go ahead and what's amazing about this is that it's not a pay for system they let you stand you eat and then you say okay i eat 10 doubles and you pay your money and you bounce simple like that and that is the unified culture that i'm talking about because we're not trying to run away with free doubles you know we respect the business and i absolutely love that so also when ordering don't order plain doubles i have a friend that does just order bar and china we give him flack about that every single time that's boring blasphemous don't do that get at least if you don't want the pepper get the rest of the stuff you know have the full experience get everything now to eat a doubles and i don't have a doubles here with me today palms flat they put the doubles in there it's the barra the china next barra you flip it you get one bar on top of the other and you give it a little spin so that way you mix everything around and then you scoop like this and you bite and so sometimes you go have to lean forward a little bit so you don't get anything on your clothes and it takes a little practice but very easy to get also you have to be able to balance your chana and barra because you don't want to eat the two barra and then you have a whole set of chana left behind but that takes a little practice you know that's a skill acquired so that is how you basically order and eat doubles so where to eat doubles there are some very popular spots like Kirep Junction, Debe, Shaguanas, Tunapuna and Arima Market those are the really good ones those are the most popular ones there was a point in time we would kind of <laughs> kind of kind of shun west doubles which is down the um west more inside we used to say you know no doubles in the west is good but they have improved actually because i 
I've, he I've eaten a few times down in the west but you know we are very particular about the area and where the doubles come from and you want to make sure that the doubles man have the little cooler with the pipe on the side so you can wash your hands and they must have a cooler with homemade orange juice and apple jay very very important features of a doubles business so you know you don't want to be out there and then somebody selling you know some kind of random other type of soda or something like that you don't want that look for the authentic stuff because you know i'm a purist so i always encourage to do the original things keep it you know so if you want to know who eats doubles doubles is actually vegan friendly so that is you know that's good for some people right um but every true trinidad and tobago person eats doubles some people took you know the gluten-free or the no fried food kind of approach but I bet you at some point they did eat doubles and they loved it and enjoyed it we just we all eat it from the moment you can get teeth in your mouth and have solid food your parents would feed you doubles you know we grew up with it now there are types of doubles there's regular doubles where you get two doubles China and all the little condiments in there and then you can order a triple where you get three barrels which is kind of a lot you know but you get three bars your china and your condiments and then recently people start ha started having chicken goat shrimp and you know stop that stop that immediately i don't think that that is a good idea if you want that i say buy a roti but that's just me you know let's keep i like the original stuff and to be honest if i go somewhere and you have those options i'm not sure that i will support your business i may but probably not so those are the types of doubles that exist now I like to always reference my cooking or my eating experiences to things that you know that I was kind of groomed into so like my memories of a child or when I was in my teens or a little younger and I remember that doubles used to be one dollar there was a man that used to ride through my neighborhood on a bicycle with a cart in front and sell doubles house to house and it was a dollar and I remember when I was in high school they used to have a doubles vendor on the outside of the school because they couldn't come in to sell and they kind of cut a hole in the chain link fence about this big and you would put your money through the fence your dollar through the fence and then you had to put your hand here and they would pass it through the fence nothing sanitary about this process i'm sure but i'm still here so it's not so bad and you get your doubles and you go back and you have your doubles and you enjoy that and you know i always remember that because that was a time where i was just getting independence with money so i had to budget my money and i know that doubles was a dollar and i can get lunch for two dollars that's two tt dollars by the way so you know, I'd love to hear your doubles memories, so make sure and share that in the comments below. I'd love to hear some really cool doubles memories. So, that is doubles. Plain and simple as it is a meal. So now, let's get into the news. According to a report in the Guardian Media, doubles and roti prices may be on the rise, with one vendor identifying price increase on raw materials to be the main reason. He stated that it will be difficult to maintain the price of $4 per doubles. Now, I've seen also comments where persons would have said that there is no price increase and they can't seem to justify why they would need to increase prices. But then there were other people quoting different places that raised certain items key to making doubles like garlic and split beef. So we'll have to wait and see. Royal Castle is disgruntled that, as they are claiming that KFC have inside information about when restaurants will be allowed to officially open. Now, I mean, this is something that happens all the time. <laughs> you know, you have a friend working somewhere, they give you a piece of information, you get a little heads up. Um, I'm surprised that they brought it to the light in an actual news report. Um, and yes, it is true. There are some royal castles that have not been able to open for whatever reason. Um, but you know, I always say, you know, that happens on every level of businesses, not just in the big businesses. Because like for me, if I had a friend that told me that they're only issuing um, grant money to persons that say sell crab, you know, I might just go and start selling crab just to make sure I'm on the inside. 
you know, unfortunately that's how it is, but you know, poor Royal Castle. Anyway, while we are now able to open food shops and restaurants with limitations, it is the responsibility of us in the food service business to ensure that we provide safe and healthy measures to our customers. To be in food business is also to be thoughtful. It is ju not just about money, but service as well. So the disappointment and concerns expressed by the authorities after our first day back is indeed justifiable. Remember when we complained about how we will make a living during the lockdown? Now we have been allowed to run some part of our business. Don't do careless things to have it revoked. Let's put in the sinks. Let's make sure that we put some marks for social distancing. There were big crowds at KFC. There were long lines at the doubles vendors. There were some vendors that were not wearing masks as they stipulated um, in the guidelines. You know, I am not able to go back out to work because I'm situated in a mall and malls don't open until much later down. But if you have the opportunity to run your business, you know, at this time, do put the measures in place because we don't want to go backwards. We definitely want to go forward and continue, you know, the phases required for us to go back to some sort of normal business operations. So as a fellow food service person, I urge everybody to take responsibility and do the right things. All right. Now, 200 pounds of contaminated local ginger have been stolen from a farmer and now the Ministry of Health is asking that any pieces of ginger measuring less than 4 inches and purchased between May 7th and 10th to be discarded. And also if you're purchasing ginger, purchase whole ginger roots and not the pieces. The ginger is contaminated with the pesticide we know as lanate. And the ministry also warns that if ingested or inhaled can be harmful and result in dizziness, nausea, and confusion. And also in high exposures can result, can result in paralysis or death. Why are we using lanate to pesticide crops? I'm not a farmer and I don't know, but if you're watching this and you are a farmer, can you please maybe explain a little bit about that to to me in the comments and to anybody else who might be wondering why we're using that particular chemical i'd really like to know and last in local news good news spotted today in karani is tippy tambu so tippy tambu is that small little potato like thing that we boil and we make it kind of salty and season it up and we just kind of peel it by the bowl and have it as a snack haven't seen it in a long time but we're starting to see it now and specifically in karani so now in international news, doubles is, is the first story in my international news. So, Chef Eric Ajipong is a Ghanaian American born, a finalist on Bravo's Top Chef and founder of Pinch and Plate. His flavors are influenced by West African cuisine and he is passionate about introducing dinners to, impact, to the impact of the West African cuisine and its effect on the South American, Latin American, Caribbean, and American foods. All concepts, of course, artfully and elegantly plated. Recently, Chef Ajipong posted on Instagram an invitation to join a class for making doubles. And I have to tell you, the picture was not well received. <laughs> His display of what you'd be learning to make as doubles. Now, in his defense, and I'm not defending him all the way, he did put that it was going to be a spin on it, but maybe maybe put a spin on the name as well. I don't know. Don't, don't be out there calling it doubles. Anyway, according to a friend who saw a clip of a challenge that the chef did, it was he said that it was called doubles because it doubled in size when it fried. Now, listen. Upon further scrolling, I discovered that he was in the process of opening a new spot called On the Double at Union Market in DC. This venture was described in the Eater magazine as Caribbean fried bread store. What did I say about fried bread? While the IG page for On the Double describes it as a taste of African diaspora from Chef Eric Ajipong through the lens of a roti shop. The 
this lens. I don't know. Okay. After I saw the, the repost on Facebook from Stinkage TT, I reached out for, to the chef for comments, but I have not received any feedback as yet. I mean, what would he? What, what would I ask? I don't even know now. I don't know. But let me know how you think. What you think about this particular thing? Because he's out there giving classes, and he has one of those blue ticks next to his name on Instagram. So his reach is far, and he's a top chef. On you know. You know, we need to do something about this because we don't want the wrong information getting out there. Okay, let's move on. So, Mutiny Island Vodka, the world's first and only vodka distilled from breadfruit. Yes, we're moving into things. It is the brainchild of award-winning chef Todd Manley and was launched as the inaugural spirit distilled and bottled at the newly opened Sion Farm Distillery. On the Caribbean island of St. Croix. Can you just not be a little proud? I am proud. It is the first vodka produced in produced on St. Croix and it's revolutionizing the vodka category and is set to shake up the cocktail culture. I definitely agree. Mm, can't wait. So if you want to check out some more history and information on that vodka, you can check out the link below. Spotted at Trader Joe's. Oob Muchi, gluten-free pancake and waffle mix made with purple yams. And if you see the box, you'll know it's very exciting stuff. It's very nice color. If it comes out like that, of course, because you know they print fancy colorful things on the front and then you make it and for some reason it's not really purple like it is on the box, but it's like a weird brown color. So just be careful. And if you do try it, make sure and tag me in your post or links or whatever it is. I'd love to see how it turned out. So, if you ever kicked a sour sup for fun, please let me help you regret it. Spotted in a shop in Atlanta, sour sups are 10 US dollars a pound. That is almost 300 TT dollars for a regular size, roughly four pound sour sup. So, maybe you need to tie a net below your sour sup treats to catch all because it's super expensive anywhere else in the world. And lastly, Galil, a New York based company, is a proud distributor of grilled eggplants, which is a product similar to what is referred to as bygone choker in Trinidad and Tobago. So I know a lot of people who cook from my channel, they ask questions about where to get certain things. I have not tried the actual product, but I think it might be a really cool substitute for you, for you to have. It's in a nice little glass jar. It looks correct. As soon as I try it, I'll give you some feedback. So that was my international news for today all of my talk on doubles and I hope that you do share your memories with me I know a lot of people made doubles for themselves through this pandemic I avoided that task by all means I said to myself I was going to wait till everything was back to normal and then I will have my doubles so that was my show for today before I go let me let you chew on this did you know that there are over 600 varieties of pepper yes over 600 so it's not just you know and from that, our pepper comes up there as well. Eh? It's well known. Something we'll talk about in another one of the episodes. So, of course, thank you to the Octopus Grill for letting us film here today. And uh, remember to be safe. All my food service people, be safe. Put those procedures in place to make sure that the customers are safe and that we don't get punished for people doing the wrong things and not being safe. And for extra sauce today... <laughs> I am going to leave you with a couple of my favorite doubles memes. And of course, if you're still hungry now, be sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you know that when we have so you know when we have new videos coming on. Good eats and happy cooking everybody. Bye.